Mary Kay Cosmetics. <laughs> A brand started by an individual called Mary Kay Ash, probably the least intimidating or scary looking person who could bring possibly no harm to anyone, you would assume. But Mary Kay Cosmetics isn't all about just the makeup and that nasty pink Cadillac they give to you. Like most multi-level marketing company, if not all, Mary Kay Cosmetics is one of those companies that pretend to be like uplifting and powerful to women, when in fact they're actually doing the complete opposite. So that is the subject of today's video. Please do consider subscribing, give this channel, give this channel, give this video a thumbs up. If you like commentary videos like this, go ahead and check out my reaction and commentary channel right here for videos that aren't necessarily beauty related. I will leave that link down below and in the pinned comment. And leave a comment on this video if you don't know what to comment, just comment Mary Kay. Okay, let's talk about this brand because some of you may be familiar with it and some of you may not. I first heard about this company when I used to work for Mac in Brixton in London. I would talk to the customers, you know, if they come in for a foundation, you would have like a mini, what's it called, consultation. You'd be like, what are you using now? Do you like it? What would you change about it? What, you know, what? get an idea of what they're looking for, what they like. And the amount of people that said to me, oh, I'm using Mary Kay, or I'm using Mary Kay, but I want to change. It, so many people, I didn't know what Mary Kay was back then. I do now because I'm very much into anti MLM content. But I would ask people, I was like, what is Mary Kay? I've never heard of Mary Kay. I've never seen a Mary Kay stand or anything like that. They would be like, oh, it's basically Avon, but not as good. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, I get it. I get the gist of it. I never looked into it further. And that's just what I thought of it from then on, lesser than Avon. Mary Kay, however, despite, you know, me not knowing about it, it, it is very popular. It's distributed in more than 35 countries worldwide. That is in Sane. And according to their LinkedIn profile, they employ around 5,000 employees, like in their head offices and the factories and things like that. But they have at least, at least 2.4 million independent beauty consultants. I'm so sorry, I got really itchy armpit. Selling their products. That's insane. So like Avon ladies, basically. Okay, but where did Mary Kay start? Let's, cause you, this is a good history of Mary Kay because it's kind of like, you were in an MLM, why have you made one? Let's talk, where did Mary Kay start? Let's talk about that. Before we get into some little drama -y bits, Mary Kay Ash, the founder of Mary Kay Cosmetics, was basically a struggling single mother trying to just, you know, work, provide for her family. She's gone from that to making this global beauty empire, which in my opinion shouldn't exist, but you know. Starting with just $5,000 in 1963, Mary Kay Ash launched her company, initially named Beauty by Mary Kay, and she launched it in a small storefront in downtown Dallas, which is, I think is quite an achievement to have your products in a store, any store. She implemented the MLM business structure of a multi-level marketing business structure within her company because she was previously part of a multi-level marketing company. She worked with a company called Stanley Home, which I've never heard of. Maybe it's just a US thing. She actually worked with this company from 1938, being a salesperson for them, going like door to door, however it used to work back then, holding parties, recruiting people, all this kind of stuff. And she did quite well. She earned, she earned a lot of money from it. Well, she was one of the lucky ones. During this time though, she was studying at university and her husband had just left her. So she was having a bit of a rough time. So Stanley Stanley Home Products did this thing where they would crown like a queen of the year. The sales rep who sold the most products would be crowned as queen of the, of the sales this year. Um, Mary Kay saw, witnessed this crowning and I was like, that has to be me. That has to be me next year. I need to work to get this goal, to get, I think the, the queen won something really amazing. So she worked really hard in her MLM, I'm assuming recruiting people and frauding people into working for their brand. And that's actually something that comes up in her history a lot. She, they say that she showed success um, a talent for recruiting, which is how you become successful in MLMs, mainly. But then she decided to work on her own company. She didn't know what to sell. She had no idea. But she was like, why not? Why not do skincare? So she purchased like a group of skincare from a company, you know, like a wholesale kind of situation and put her name on it and started to sell cosmetics. She then, of course, started Mary Kay Cosmetics. She then did an Avon and started to recruit people to help distribute her products that were sold at 40 to 50% markup. So typical MLM super expensive. That's kind of typical for most companies anyway in general. All Mary Kay consultants were encouraged to 
fake it till you make it. Like most MLM people do, people are involved in MLMs, with the understanding that you are in business for yourself, but not by yourself, which is kind of a nice thing to say. I don't believe it, but it's a nice thing to say. Top salespeople in Mary Kay would receive things like um, jewelry, vacations, a gross pink Cadillac. And they were presented with these things at seminars, like big, have you ever seen an MLM seminar? Maybe I can find some footage and put it in here for you. It's like selling out a stadium, but not really selling out. And they have motivational speakers that really don't motivate anything at all and, and talk a load of shit. And then um, they do things like give people their prizes. It's this like putting them on a stage being like, you could be this too if you just tried and recruited more people. It gives them like a false hope. And, and they set personal goals to reach that are really quite unachievable. Now it's time to recognize the members of the Beauty Consultant Queen's Court of Personal Sales. These beauty consultants are determined in their mission to build a strong customer base. They achieved at least $40,000 in personal retail sales and have inspired us with their passion and persistence. For their amazing accomplishments this year, they received the choice of one of these dazzling rings or a cash reward. In addition, the top 20 beauty consultants also received exclusive access to the Pink Lounge backstage. Stanborn Boyer. From the Mary Kay National Area, Elaine Gannon. From the Mary Kay National Area, Edith Smith. From the Sonia Pius area, Areli Gonzalez. It's that false like hope that one day you'll be that person on that stage receiving that jewelry or that vacation or that nasty Cadillac that you actually kind of had to pay for anyway. You know, Mary Kay expanded into other countries by the 1970s. And by 1976, just six years later, the company was large enough to be traded on the stock exchange, which I don't know what that means. I know what it is, but I don't get what that means. And between 1973 and 1983, the stock price of Mary Kay rose to 600, let me get this right, and 70%. That's... That's a lot. And by the 1990s, Mary Kay Cosmetics had distribution factories, centers, whatever they're called, all around the US. So this isn't just a small MLM. This was huge, huge. We're talking Avon scale. We're talking big, big company scale. So they had to have distribution centers everywhere. And also they moved into the Australian market in the 70s, Canada, Argentina in the 80s, Japan and China in the 90s. And by 1996, their sales reached $1 billion. And Mary Kay herself stayed active in the company, quite active actually, um, until she suffered a stroke in 1996. She did end up passing away on Thanksgiving Day, um, November 22nd to 20. 2001, I was about to say 2001, 2001. Although this brand tries to give like humble beginnings vibes, like most companies, um, they try to make it, they try to make themselves like the average person. We started from the bottom, now we're here, you could do it too, that kind of situation. And they act like they're a family and like they're there for all their consultants. Mary Kay is no stranger, like other pyramid schemes, um, commercial cults, to leaving their consultants feeling emotionally, financially abused. They are another one of those brands that sell a lifestyle off. You work from home, in your own time, from your phone, be at home with your children, be free, that kind of thing, when actually it's the complete opposite. In fact, if you go to their website, you can start your own business for just $55. And when they sell it as only $55 to start your own career and potentially make hundreds and thousands of dollars, you're kind of like, oh, okay, that's not too bad. Especially if you're like a little bit desperate for money and this opportunity, why am I thinking else so black? And this opportunity presents itself to you. Perhaps you're a single parent, perhaps you're in severe debt and someone comes along and says, I'm making money from this brand you might just jump on board. So I want to refer to a blog here called Pink Truth. And it's a blog that's made by an ex Mary Kay consultant. There's a lot of information on there about Mary Kay, the, de the dark side of Mary Kay. 
Um, and actually, this, this post is called The Dark Side of Mary Kay, and it's written by Susie Q. Susie was very high up in Mary Kay. You Like, they have levels, right? So you can be, like, down here, or you can be up here, depending on how many people you recruit. Your ranking, and the rankings are always, like, Diamond Princess, Queen of the Universe. And then down here, it's, like, Lady Next Door. You know, like, that is that kind of ranking. She became a director with a company, so she got high up very quickly. Now, here's the thing. A lot of... MLMs rely on their distributors to purchase product, right? And recruit. A lot of the time, they make more money from their distributors than they do customers. Well, their distributors are their customers, but you know, people who don't work for the brand. I always think of it this way. When I used to work for Disney, I would spend my day working in the park. On my days off, I would take the money I worked for the park, and I'll go back into the parks and buy merchandise and food. It's like, you're being paid, but then you're also giving it to the company again. We spoke about the ranks as well, and MLMs, right? Ranks are so important for for people to kind of like show like, yeah, I'm really high up, I'm doing it. If you're seen as doing really, really well, people are more likely to be recruited by you so you can teach them, so you can, you know, help them help them do their skills. But a lot of the time people don't make rank and making rank means you have to sell a certain amount of products every single month. And what this makes a lot of consultants do is purchase the products themselves so they can hit rank. They put a sale through under their name, perhaps on a credit card, um, a loan, and they'll do this every single month if they haven't hit their target. There's a particular jewelry MLM where they kind of like sell the jewelry amongst each other because maybe one person will receive a, they receive like stock um, and maybe someone will receive an extremely rare one. So they put it on like a Facebook group. It's like, does anyone want this? And then one of the salespeople will buy it. It's like, you're making money. It's a vicious circle. They just sell to each other. In Susie's article, she stated that um, Mary Kay often told them you don't have to have an inventory to sell products. At, meaning you don't have to buy loads of products to be like your showpieces. You don't have to show up at parties with loads of stock and being like, look what we have, look what we have. But at the same time, they were told, quote, you can't sell from an empty wagon which is actually kind of true. I mean, look at the starter kit. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven um, products. They look like minis and they look like the same thing. Actually, these might be products here. I don't know what they are. And then like the rest of it is like information and a horrible bag. You're gonna have to end up purchasing some of these products at some point, because how are you gonna know how these products work? That's crazy. How are you meant to sell beauty products? if you can't really try them at a party, if you go to someone's house, you can't sit there on a website and be like, yeah, this is nice, this is nice. You kind of have to have something to show. And as I said earlier, status level in multi-level marketing companies is so important because it just shows that you're being like successful. It shows that you figured out your business, your business. Regarding recruitment, Susie says in her article here, we were encouraged and essentially had to order to reach goals. Working for cars, unit clubs, I don't know what it means, courts, whatever. It was always involved ordering. Sales are not important and warm bodies with credit cards, always no exceptions. I remember waking up at 4 a.m. wondering how I was gonna buy groceries or clothes for my kids. I remember all the money spent on director paraphernalia, including suits and unit prizes, expenses for events, newsletters and postage, business cards, section two purchases, the list goes on and on. I did not have to show a spouse where my money was going, so my relationship was never in jeopardy. But oh lord, the convos I had with sister directors whose husband expressed concern, it was overwhelming. She also adds to this, I started with an 800 plus credit score and ended Mary Kay in bankruptcy court. It was so humiliating. It still causes me shame to remember it. A lot of people, especially the ones in MLMs, look at this kind of stuff and their initial reaction is like, well, no one told you to spend money. No one told you you had to do this. It's not our fault you were stupid. You know, you don't have to do that to work in an MLM. But you have to kind of get into the mind frame of being in one of these multi-level marketing companies. They are commercial cults. I'm going to direct you again to Cece Suarez's video that she did with a cult expert about these multi-level marketing companies. I'm gonna leave it linked down below in the description box for you as well. When you're recruited into one of these multi-level marketing companies, it becomes your whole world. They advertise it as this life experience, life-changing. You're gonna have a community. The communities aren't as friendly as you think they're going to be. If you leave that MLM, God forbid, that community hate you. They will, and they'll make it obvious, they will hound you, they will ruin your life, or they'll try to. It becomes the way you value yourself. Your success within this business is the value of your life. They tell you, you know, you're doing this for your kids. What's your reason why? They always say that. What's your why? So my kids can have a better life, so I can be at home with my kids, so my husband can retire. That's another one. If you are 
trying to do something for your family and this brand is making you, convincing you that it's for your family, the benefit of your family and you are failing, you're gonna genuinely think that you are failing your family. It's this cult mentality. And by this point, a lot of people lose friends and family because they're trying to push these products onto people. And the uplines, the leaders within these brands say you don't need your family. They're trying to let you fail. They don't love you. They don't want you to fa um, succeed in this business. So you've lost them. And how embarrassing now if you give up. You've lost the most important people in your life. You can't give up now. Listen to this vicious rumor, right? In 1984, a multi-level marketing consultant what was her name, by the name of Beverly Nadler, um, published an article in a magazine. The magazine was called Business Connections Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird multi-level, like, um, industry magazine, it's, it's very strange, um, that claimed the following. Ma multi-level marketing, also known as MLM, has finally gained respectability. It's being taught in Harvard Business School. And both Stanford Research and the Wall Street Journal has stated that between 50% and 65% of all goods and services will be sold through multi-level marketing methods by the 1990s. This is a multi-billion dollar industry. Well, this is also a complete lie. <laughs> this is a complete lie. It's not taught there at all in any of those universities. This is actually something I've heard myself when I watch like um, MLM recruitment things in reaction videos that MLM people higher ups use to kind of recruit people. It's a good method. It's taught at Harvard Business School. Why would it not be successful for you? Why would it not work for you? And why this is so specific to Mary Kay is because Harvard Business School did actually publish a case study on Mary Kay Cosmetics. The business structure of multi-level marketing companies isn't taught within any of these schools. And if it was, I'm sure it wouldn't be for good reasons. It is a pyramid scheme, however, so I sh I'm sure they do touch on them at Harvard Business School. In fact, a professor at Harvard Business School actually said the following, right? He worries that people will actually join multi-level marketing companies or think they're good practice because of this lie. And it actually comes from the Mary Kay brand. It's believed that the person who wrote that article initially was from Mary Kay. Harvard Business School don't condone it at all. He goes on to say, you hate to see your name used in a way that you haven't approved. Then you think of all the people who are being led down a path to some financial distress. A professor of business saying financial stress stress for an MLM is exactly that. Everyone knows they're terrible. And if anything, they probably teach you to stay away from them in Harvard Business School because it's an unsustainable business. As I always say in these videos, people that work for multi-level marketing companies defend their brands with their lives. They are in the comments, it changed my life forever. You never see anyone else do that for a normal business. If, so, if I still worked for a company um, in, a, in a store, for example, and somebody made a video of them saying they didn't like the brand, they didn't like their ethics, I wouldn't then take to the internet and be like, they changed my life, how dare you? It's very cult status. So watch out for comments in the future from Mary Kay Consultants acting a little bit crazy. Okay, thank you so, so much for joining me. Do be wary of brands like this, companies like this. Even if you're not part of them you're still and you're still purchased from them, you're still supporting this kind of business structure that actually can ruin people's lives. So just go ahead and think of that when you're purchasing products. Thank you again for joining me. Consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!